what's going on everybody as you can see title in hand smackdown blue shirt on me a, a, a little bit late but smackdown review and um i also got an announcement at the end of the video so as you stick around for that got a big announcement big things going, going on for a little bit man so here you go first they did do like a recap as they always do with what led to this episode they uh they saw like what happened at the press conference and the stuff with Cody. Um and then right before that right before I get into what they first did, they did they saw like an earlier in the day of the rock was about pulling up to the arena so you know he was in house. But they didn't start off the show with a promo. They started off with a straight match which was the man's qualifier match between KO or Kevin Owens and Dominic Mysterio. This was a fun match. Uh, Rick, uh, R Truth was at ringside, and uh, because he thinks Kevin Owens for some reason is the Miz, and he, uh, he and he's he's out there to basically support the Miz, which is really Kevin Owens. And they had a fun little match, you know, back and forth. Had nice decent spots. Uh, overall, it was a it was a good match. Uh, our truth would be the deciding factor here, but when Dominic Mysterio told our truth to go get a chair, and he said, "I thought I'm not in the judgment day." He said, "Yeah, you is. You you want to be a part of judgment day? You in the judgment day? You is. Give me the chair." And he went to go get the chair, but instead of handing it to Dominic, he just uh, sat in the chair. And this distraction would allow Kevin Owens to get the victory over Dominic Mysterio, and Kevin Owens would take the second to last spot in the men's elimination chamber match. Um, let's see. Then we have the women's. The next match was the women's elimination chamber match. There was some, there was some, uh, some like backstage stuff here, but I can't remember. But I do remember a significant one. Cause I think I wrote it down here. Uh, did I uh, did I do that? Oh yeah, I did. Okay, yeah, I wrote it down there. Uh, they then had, uh, and we will be getting to that segment that I got up there in a minute, but then we did have Zelina Vega versus, uh, uh, I'm about to say, uh versus Tiffany Stratton, but the significance here is that Sansi Blackheart was supposed to be in this. And uh, Sansi got injured. If you don't know, uh, NXT is pre taped for next week. So she was, she was supposed to have a title match with the uh, NXT Women's Champion. Uh, Lyra Valkyrie, I think, or Laura Valkyrie, I think that's her name. And she was supposed to, uh, it, it, during the match, she took, she had a freak accident. It looked like she hurt her knee. And I think they said she hurt, she injured her knee, and they had to uh, stop the match. Thus, uh, I think they had like a little YouTube short with uh, Nick Aldis announcing that because of her, uh, because of her injury. They was gonna have to find a replacement. That replacement ended up being Zelina Vega. So this was a fun little match. They end up they worked in uh, Lil Gallo Del Fantasma into it where they where they came at ringside to uh, mess with Zelina Vega, which brought back out LWO. Uh, other, but otherwise, this was a fun little match. It was mostly get Tiffany over, and I hate that they did that because I really really want them to build up Zelina Vega. And Zelina Vega is a wonderful talent, but when you don't put nothing behind her, the fans aren't going to get behind her. And I feel bad for her, but this was more so to get over Tiffany Stratton. And Tiffany Stratton did end up getting the victory here, which it was obvious. Because this was one of the people I always predicted was going to be in the women's uh, elimination chat. I never had Sansi or Zelina win winning. I always knew that it was Tiffany. But uh, yeah, Tiffany was Stratton wins, and she uh, due to outside interference and distractions, and there would be a little mini brawl with L between the Gal Defatasma and uh, LWO. Um, there was a backstage promo with the uh, with the OC, looking like they having little complications. Um, the uh, Carl Anderson and uh, AJ would get into a heated argument, and they had to be separated uh, by Lou Gallows and Me Chen. Uh, the AOP had a match against two, uh, two NXT talents, uh, Javier and 
Morris. I forgot the uh, guy's first name, but it was Javier and Morris. And this was a this was was a five like a five six minute match. Uh, the ALP destroyed them and came out the victory. Which and then I think there was announced next week that the Street Profits and the AOP will be uh, going against each other in a tag team match. Uh, then we got the last men's elimination qualifier match, which was uh, the men's versus Logan Paul. Which ironically, our truth did not come out ringside because this was the match for the men's. But yeah. Uh, the Miz, the Miz and uh, Logan Paul would have a good back and forth. And I mean, a good. This was probably maybe the best match of the night. I would say, yeah, this was probably the best match match of the night. Uh, very good. Uh, um, I want to say what I wanted to say. It was a very good match. Logan Paul though would get the victory here, and uh, yeah, he he would take the last spot in the Man's Elimination Chamber match. Which we all know Drew McIntyre is winning. He got the most. He got the most push right now. Um, but yeah, Logan Paul wins. And uh, we did have a backstage promo where uh, Nick Aldis had Jay Cargill and Braun Breaker in the uh, in the, um, in his office talking uh, to with con with SmackDown contracts, talking to them about becoming SmackDown superstars. With ironically, for some odd reason. Uh, 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 Liv Morgan and I don't know why Liv Morgan was there. That was the random part. Liv, Liv Morgan is on Raw, but she why was she there on SmackDown with with Bianca Belair? Both of them were just randomly hanging out in Nick Aldis' uh, room with Tiffany Stratton coming and starting the uh, a confrontation between the two, uh, which Braun Breaker and uh, what well, mostly Jay Cargill didn't take the liking to. And, uh, and with Nick always being like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is not the time and the place for that. And, uh, and then he will lead the room. Nick, uh, Nick, Jade, and Braun Breaker will lead the room. If you don't know Jade, even though they're trying to tease it, it's been already confirmed from the backstage reports that Jade Cargill will be a member of the SmackDown roster. Um, then we got our main event match with uh, Naomi versus uh Alba Fire for the uh to for the last uh, for the well the second last because there's still one spot left but there is Naomi versus Alba Fire for a spot in the women's elimination chamber match which was I should also point out Naomi got some new music here um this was a good match Naomi looked it good you know she she still she still fight like Naomi but she got she added like a new submission hold to her repertoire now as her finisher. Uh, Alba Fire look good here too. I like Alba Fire and Easter Dawn's little teamwork. They try to, you know, they try to cheat multiple times but couldn't beat, um, couldn't beat Naomi. And I like that they made, that they starting to try to make Naomi a little bit more credible here because she had, she's a multi-time world champion in two different companies now. So you got, you got to kind of make her look strong. You know, she got to kind of be like a serious character like that. Like, you know she might, she most likely going to win a match every time she's in the match. Uh, but, yeah, this, otherwise this match was good. I had no complaints about it. It made both people look good. The only thing I would say was I like I would like for Elbow Fire and Easley Dawn to actually be used more and get some actual wins as they are a legit tag team as well. Um uh, Nick always came out to announce that Braun Breaker uh, has officially become a SmackDown superstar, which changed which changed my predictions for Gunther because I, I actually had Braun Breaker uh, going up against Gunther to take his Intercontinental title, but now it's more it seems like it's gonna be Jay either Jay Uso or Chad Gable. One of them is probably gonna end up doing it. Um, and then we got the main event. Which is, or uh, we already had the main event match, but we got the last segment of the night, which is the bloodline. And uh, the bloodline of Roman Reigns, uh, Jimmy, and Solo, where Paul Heyman both came out. Roman did his uh, usual acknowledge me. And uh, basically, and talked, uh, basically talked about how the bloodline is stronger than ever, and that he, and that he even, uh, 
he scolded the fans when they chanted uh, Cody's name, saying that Cody messed everything up. Yeah, he said, yeah, the guy that messed everything up. And um, he basically talked about how more powerful and more uh, uh, and more powerful the bloodline is because this is a joyous occasion for this is the, this is the Rock's. This is for a celebration of the Rock joining the bloodline. This will bring out the Rock who comes out and he wear his vest on. And you can tell he's in his Hollywood Rock gimmick. Uh, and this is where... This is where the promo picks up, right? Because the promo, I don't do it justice here in my explanation, but Roman Roman got the crowd warmed up, and Rock came and just knocked it out the park. Rock is still Rock is good at being Hollywood Rock. I mean, he we got him talking about such a mouth, fatty. Like he, <laughs> we got foot on heel, Rock. This is base. This is definitely Hill Hollywood Rock. I mean, I, I, I would love to. I, I, if I tried to break down what the Rock said, I wouldn't do it justice. But let's just say he, he talked trash to the crowd, called them crybaby bitches. <laughs> yeah, these are literal things he did too. Like he literally talked trash to the crowd, called them crybaby bitches, and um, uh. He said that uh, Cody is a loser, and that he talked about also too, like how this is not how things should go. Like you, he, Cody had his chance at last year at WrestleMania, and like you, he also scolded the crowd for having. He did say like you, you had it in your hand. You had the greatest, the greatest match that WrestleMania could ever produce. That dirty in any sports entertainment could ever produce, which is The Rock versus Roman Reigns, and you had it in the palm of your hands, but you flushed it down the toilet. That same toilet that you sat on tweeting with your little fingers tweeting, "We want Cody," mocking, hot, mocking them, chanting, "We want Cody," saying that he that they they ruined everything doing that. And um, I'm like I said, like I can't do it justice like The Rock did. Man, I can't. But yeah, he said he uh he he scolded them for that, uh scold, he scolded them for uh being like I said crybaby bitches, and um and saying that uh he like he was saying how when people get when people lose they dust themselves off and move on and make themselves better. He said he said he was saying like he made like the, they was I think they was in Utah he he made the comparison to Utah Jazz and stuff like that and um. When other teams lose and with other, and other sports, he said, "Let's take that logic to other sports." And then, um, yeah, he basically said that he is not and him now as part of the bloodline. He's gonna do everything in his power to make sure that Cody walks out of WrestleMania 40 as a loser he is. And then he did the "If you smell," but then he scolded the crowd for trying to do it. When he said, "No, no, no," he said, "Shut your mouths!" The sing along with the Rock is over with. And, uh, and enjoy uh, 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 such a candy ass it's up and enjoy the ride the rock is going to take you on than he did if you smell what the bloodline is cooking and then they they you see the rock going like this and they all stuck they while everybody else did like this he said uh. but yeah that was that, that promo alone was fire that promo alone was fire it this if it wasn't for that promo I would say this this episode was a, was almost I would say this episode was a six point five or a seven, but with that uh, but with that promo, I am going to give this. I was going to give it an eight, but I can't say it was an eight just because of the promo. But I'm going to give it a seven point five out of ten big ups because that promo almost made it an eight, but. You let me know in the comments down below what you thought. And before I start my little outro here, the the announcement that I have for you guys is that me and a couple of YouTubers, uh, one YouTuber in particular that's going to be a part of this is Chris Resident of Views. And I said this before in my Mr. Baller video, if you haven't seen that video. So this is me saying it here. This is probably more appropriate for me to say it here because it's a wrestling video. And this is a wrestling uh, announcement. So me, Chris Wrestling Views, and a few other 
uh, YouTubers are going to get together and we're going to create our own podcast called the Wrestling Pit Podcast. And that re- and in that podcast, we're going to be talking about uh, obviously everything wrestling from WWE, AEW. Might sneak in a little TNA and in, uh, in here or whatnot. Our predictions on what's going to happen at pay per views. Our reactions to who's going, to, who's signing where. You know how you know how like AEW is about is seemingly about to have Sasha Banks and Okada. And, um, you know we'll be talking about all types of stuff like that, like that. I'm pretty sure our first podcast episode will be for Elimination Chamber. I'm not too sure, but more information will be coming soon. But yeah, me and a couple of YouTubers are getting together and making a wrestling podcast. So stick, stay tuned for that. But if you enjoy my video, you know what to do. You hit this button right there for all of my wrestling vid, uh, wrestling reviews, WWE reviews. And if you enjoy the video so much and want to support the channel, all you got to do is hit those buttons. And as always, hit any one of these videos for more of my amazing content. Thank you. And stay tuned. i got more. Peace.